Hi, we're going to review how to solve equations that are cubic and quartic and other polynomials along the way. So, if you remember, um, that we learned two methods. The first method we're going to work through is just the factoring method. So, when you see a polynomial, the first thing you want to do is you want to look for a greatest common factor. So, sort of step one, look for a greatest common factor. And I notice that the greatest common factor is x. So I will have 6x squared plus 10x plus 5 equals 0. Um, after you look at your greatest common factor, the next thing that you do is you set factors equal to 0. Equal to 0. So my first one is my greatest common factor equals 0. And then my other part, I can't factor it at this moment. We, oops, we haven't checked it. But we set each factor equal to 0. And we know because this is a cubic problem, there should be three total zeros. And now we have 1. We have that x equals 0. Now, after you've done your GCF, if that's possible, and you set each factor equal to 0, from here, you may try to factor again. So this would require AC. AC is 30, something that adds to 10. So you write out your factors of 30, 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. And we notice this is not factorable. If something is not factorable, but it is a quadratic, then our only option, if it's not factorable, is to use the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula will always work. Even if it is factorable, you can always jump to the quadratic formula. So we're going to solve that here to find our other two zeros. So as I walk through this, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a and c all over 2a. From here, you're just going to continue to simplify. After you simplify, you start to notice that you're going to have two zeros that are imaginary because you're going to have to pop your eye out. So I'm going to write that up here. So I have x equals negative 10 plus or minus, and then I have to break apart my negative um, or the square root of negative 20. So the first thing I know is that would be i squared of 20, and then I have to break that apart maybe into 4 and 5 and 2 and 2. So this would be a pair of 2's. So that would be 2i square root of 5 all over 12. And now each whole number, we don't care about the radical, each whole number can be divided by 2. So x equals negative 5 plus or minus i square root of 5 over 6. And this takes up two more zeros because one you're adding, that's one answer, and the second one is 5 minus, or negative 5 minus, so that's your second answer. So I have 1, 2, 3 exact zeros. Exact meaning you're not going to have any decimals. Okay, we're going to move on to another problem. This problem is quartic, so we know that there should be four zeros. So we look and we notice there is no GCF. So no GCF. There are sort of two options if there's no GCF. Um, one is to try to factor it. And we talked about this, that you can factor quartics the same way that you factor quadratics. So no GCF, but we could try to factor. But try to factor. So I would still say what multiplies to AC, so that's 4. So 1 and 4, 2 and 2, and makes it a negative 5. Well, if I make both of those negative. So my factor would be x squared minus 1, and x squared minus 4 equals 0. So I factored. So I'm going to step 2, set each factor equal to 0. So set this factor equal to 0, and set this factor equal to 0. And now I'm going to solve. And it's nice because I can use the square root method. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So x squared equals 1. I'm going to take the square root. 
So if I take the square root of both sides, that's going to give me plus or minus, don't forget plus or minus, 1. Same thing over here, I'm going to add 4 to both sides, then I'm going to take the square root, so x equals plus or minus 2, and now you see that I have 4 exact answers. So we have four answers, which we knew there were supposed to be four zeros. We have one, positive one, negative one, positive two, and negative two. So here are my four zeros. So we've shown you in both of these two problems factoring. So now I'm going to go to our third example. Our third example, when you look at, there's no GCF. And we can't do our AC method because it's not quadratic or quartic. So what do we do? Well, in this method, and it would work for all methods, is really the first method you want to do is you want to try to graph. And you want to graph to find at least one zero. So let me pull up my calculator. So if you're going to graph it, you just go to your y equals, you type in x cubed, and again, mine looks a different because it's just a different operating system, 10x minus 12, and you hit graph, or zoom, sorry, 6, so that it goes 10 by 10. And what you're looking for is you're looking for one rational root. So it could either be this is a rational one or maybe that is rational. So we're going to do second trace and we're going to hit zero. And we're going to type in something to the left like two, something to the right, maybe five. And then I'm just going to guess. And this one is not rational. So if it's not rational, then we want to check our other ones, and again, always make sure that you typed it in um, correctly. We typed it in correctly, so now we're going to go back to our graph. Now, if we saw one that was irrational, that means there needs to be another irrational, because remember we said um, in an earlier video that they come in conjugate pairs. So we don't know what's happening here, so we need to zoom in. So I'm going to do number two. I'm going to zoom in, again, if you use your cursor, notice mine's way up there. I want to zoom in so that my cursor is in the location of the place of interest. Oops. And we're interested in zooming in right about there. So I hit enter. Oops. And I must have clicked it too many times. And so notice that this does go above and below. So there's actually two more. And we know there should be three. So that's good. So we're going to have to use our second trace um, button again, second trace. We're going to hit 0, and now sometimes it's hard to tell, but you might have to hit your button a few times to find your cursor. I know it's coming up because this is getting less negative. Less negative. It should be coming on my screen. Oh, there it is. So this would be to the left, and then if I click over here, this would be to the right of that point. And I want to guess just this side. I don't want to guess that one. I want to guess this one. And I found my first rational zero. So this is the point of the graphing, is to find a rational one. We found one irrational. That means this one's also irrational. But we found a zero to be x equals negative 2. That's huge. That's one of our zeros. And that will help us find our other two. So what do we do in this case? We are going to use synthetic division. So we crafted it because there was no GCF, and we had to zoom in because we needed to find one of them, and there'll always be one. And so we're going to use our zero for, to synthetically divide. So we put our zero here. Remember when we synthetically divide, we use our coefficients, so that would be 1x cubed, 0x squared, negative 10x, and negative 12. And then we add. We first add 0, so this should just be a 1, and then we multiply. 1 times a negative 2 is a negative 2. Then we add, and we get negative 2. Then we multiply, and we get a positive 4. We add, and we get a negative 6. We multiply, and we get a positive 12. So again, that tells us that this is a 0 because there's a remainder. It tells us that it's we took out um, a value, and now we have, again, it was x cubed, so this is 1x squared minus 2x minus 6 equals 0. Always one less, and it just kind of works its way down. Now, this is a quadratic. That's awesome, because if you have a quadratic, you can use the quadratic formula. And that's what we're going to do to find our other two, because we already have one. So we graphed it. Then we use synthetic division. 
and we use synthetic division to make it a quadratic and then we are able to use the quadratic formula to find our other two. So that's what we're going to do now. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Simplify, so you have 2 plus or minus the square root 4 plus 24 is 28 over 2. Have to break apart your radical first. You can't divide here. You have to first break it apart. So 28 would be 4 and 7, so 2 and 2. So this would be 2 plus or minus 2 squared of 7 over 2. All the whole numbers are divisible by um, 2. So x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 7. And it's over 1, so we don't even have to write it. So I now have three zeros. I have the rational zero of negative 2, and I have my irrational, because square roots, irrational, two of them, zero. So we have three answers. So those are two methods that you can use. You can try to factor, or you can try this graphing method, and this graphing method will always work. So if you just want to remember this, you could do this every single time, even if it's quartic, um, if it's quintic or whatever, you could use this method every single time.